Looks like sin, he's heavy sin Third person, omnipotent Great words, no difference I don't rap, I make art Bird need a race car This ain't for the faint heart Above clouds like gang star My mic working? Yep, you're good. Uh, I'm Brendan Austin Timberlake of Slightly Daily. This is the newest installment of the podcast series, episode number 17. Because we did 16 last night. Episode number 17. We're pumping these out. We're on YouTube. You know, you can watch the video. You can listen to audio, audio only versions on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Follow me at Slightly Daily on all platforms. I got I got a friend of mine, Kellum, right here. Connor's not in camera, but he's here always. Yup, in your ear. <laughs> um, Kellum, what's going on, man? Man, it, it's really good to see you because it's, yeah, it's it's been, been a, it's, it's been, been a while. It's literally probably been two years. Yeah, I'd say probably two years. <laughs> I mean, um, so let's talk about your MT experience. Yeah. Uh, did you go? I like to because I've had a, a few people who are MTSU students who haven't finished yet, and I we had that connection, you know, because I finished in 2018. Okay. So, uh, like, have you gone? Did you go all the way through, or did you take any breaks or anything? Yeah. Um, so I graduated high school in 2015 from Central, and that's obviously like where we know each other yeah. from. Um, started MTSU, moved out, uh, had an apartment with some buddies. Get a little bit closer. Um, You're good. Had a lived with a couple buddies uh, from Central, played soccer with and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I went to that apartment yeah, a yeah. couple uh, times. It's over there across from uh, off Rutherford, right? Yeah, right mm-hmm. off Rutherford. Yeah, I, I'd been there a few times. It was a it was a fun time. I learned a lot uh-huh. about myself. And yeah. My friends and uh, um, who stayed in that house with you? It was me, Chris Dobson, and Mason Shadrick. Okay. And then Brittany ended up coming down and kind of staying mm. that with Chris. Okay. Um, but honestly, so many people different, so many different people stayed there. Like, yeah, it was like a, a flop house. It, was a I, I, it gets like that because I used to live in a, another house uh, off Middle Tennessee, man, and we used to just have I, I parked hell there, of I people. Yeah, dude, I've we been, used to I've been parties hell. over there. Oh gosh. So I definitely so, feel that people just being young and just being like, "Hey, my hat, pull up," you know? Yeah, pull all up. the time. <laughs> um, so that it was a great start to my like college experience. Um, sure. I probably went for my first two years. We moved to another apartment. Um, okay. Same people. Living same there? people, roughly. Um, mm-hmm. And then I took a break. I like we, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I ended up going to rehab for um, a little bit like substance abuse, and it was. Okay. My choice. It was not like someone else. Forced. Somebody didn't, yeah. Court ordered. No, like, no. Not. I didn't get in any trouble with the law or anything. And yeah. I wanted to keep it that way. That's kind of why For sure. um, I went. And I wanted to get out of the situation I was in. I saw um, a path that I was headed down that I didn't want to be in anymore. Yeah. Um, That's very responsible. It takes a, I mean, it takes a man yeah. to own up to something like uh, that. Yeah. It was, it's not easy to ask for help like that. Yeah. Um, and so it was weird. It was a crazy experience, and we can talk about it more later if mm-hmm. we get into it. Um, but so I took a semester off to do that. Um, I it was halfway in between my experience. Um, so I came back um, after a month, lived in a halfway house for six months. Okay. Um, and then during that time, I didn't go to school. I was just kind of like getting myself back together, yeah, getting back um, on your feet. Yeah. Getting more uh, back in, in re-entering yourself into society. Yeah. Yeah, getting yeah. getting used to life again and mm-hmm. being sober. Because uh, I mean, before that, I hadn't been sober for four or five years. Like yeah. I hadn't gone more more than a week without using substances and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it felt good to get clean. Um, and I you would had, recommend you had it. like a, a fresh brain almost. Oh yeah. At, at the whenever you came out on the other side, your your brain probably was like you probably just had more energy, you know, more and ideas. I, yeah, um, ideas. But like. All, all all the way across like quality of life improved yeah um for me it was i looking back um i wasn't physically addicted to any substances i didn't need to go to rehab and like detox and stuff mm-hmm. um but mentally it was something that, that you were I, just attached that, that, that it's something that i needed to do um mm-hmm. and i've learned so much there met so many people that have been through um a lot of some different shit. things like yeah. some shit, like od in like nine times i'm like Ugh. That's scary. That nine lives, like that's you're a, playing with death. It's a cat. You're literally, you literally, yeah, you, yeah. That is a cat. <laughs> like, I don't want to be that. I don't. Right. Wanna, people have been coming to 
this rehab like over and over again, like three and four times, spending all this money. Their family spending this money. It's like, okay, I can't do this. I, this is gonna be a one time trip. I'm getting in and getting out. Yeah. Um, so I came back. I did the six months. I stayed sober for a year, and uh, I start. I got back into school, and um, so what? Two what? Years what later, year is this exactly? 2017 three ish? years ago this month okay i left for rehab so okay. like i was supposed to be going starting school like everybody started yeah. school this week yeah yeah this yeah last week right i left um and then you came back in that fall i came back that fall that one so semester. that so it was the it was end like of six months okay so all right yeah so that's like roughly 2017 end of 2017 mm-hmm. yeah that fall semester so yeah. you were only really behind a semester i was really only behind a semester yeah. and then i ended up taking some summer classes so i, oh, I ended up graduating this past december so okay. 2015 to 2019 it was still only four years i was only yeah one semester oh yeah you, did, you was, were right on track i was on time i felt behind um <laughs> the whole it it's a it's definitely a, a paradigm shift of like an ego shock like the, having that experience and coming back and like all your friends are still like do, hanging out, doing all the things you used to do. And another big thing was I I was rushing a fraternity um, right right before at MT happened. at MT. Which um, one? Phi Kappa Tau, Phi hmm. Tall. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and dude, the guys are great. I loved it. Um, they're really awesome people. And fraternities are definitely for some people. Um, but for me, it was an environment that um, really just cultivated uh, bad habits. Um, sure. Um, I definitely formed some relationships that I still keep in touch. You still with. connect. Yeah, I still people. connect with some of the guys. That's dope. Um, and that's really, I mean, yeah, the partying and stuff is like a big part of it. But that's really what it's for. It's made for is so you'll have like lifelong a brotherhood relationships. Yeah, yeah. a brotherhood, literally. Um, and like, say you're uh, on the other end of co- your y'all both have degrees or whatever, and y'all could like maybe start a business. Connect. You know, theoretically, for sure, start a business or something together. Be work partners. Is talking about, you know, like Greek organizations going to put you in any kind of bind? I don't know if there's just, just like a... No. I don't know. I mean, like, that's the thing. I I paid dues and stuff, and, like, I did the whole thing. I mm. went up right until initiation. Um, yeah. And then literally initiation day is the day I left for rehab because I was like, uh, I want to get out of this. Yeah. Like, I got to stop. I got... Yeah. And so I came back and just wasn't affiliated with them anymore. And mm. they're great people, and I, I recommend um, Greek life to yeah. anybody that wants to give it a try um, or especially for someone who's like coming from out of town oh yeah you know like you don't oh, have i don't know stuff. anyone here so let me you know yeah get in get involved make friends um i've never wanted to i never personally wanted to do anything i mean you know zach long yeah he i mean he was the president of sigma, sigma nu and yeah. At UT. yeah that's why I'm, i asked about like the the organization thing because me me and nathan had like a fun idea to start one but it wasn't like a, a greek organization yeah it was just like yeah and he said yeah i'll definitely join it but it can't be like a greek organization oh okay <laughs> yeah yeah because of he's already in one mm-hmm. okay so, yeah, yeah so i was like i didn't know if there's like you know there is there is a thing that. like once you initiate you like can't become a part of another one or mm-hmm. something like that if i'm right so like, i did all switch. the the education stuff i learned all about the fraternity and did all the initiation stuff um and so i was uh, to the point where I was going to say, yeah, I'm in it. But mm-hmm. then I was like, no. So yeah. I'm not bound to any organization right now or anything. Yeah. I asked for my money back, but they didn't give it to me. So it's eh. fine. I'm not yeah. worried about yeah, it. it's fine. Um, How much does it cost to be in a frat? They're all, uh, I mean, it definitely ranges. Like the ones in yeah. Knoxville, yeah, I the assume SEC schools. they're like outrageous amounts of money. <laughs> like per, and per there's semester, like, a, like yeah. monthly, I don't even know. And plus those million dollar homes that yeah. some of yeah, them yeah, live yeah. in. You seen, you know, the, is that what the money goes to? Like housing? Partly. Or not? Like, yeah, it goes to housing and like fundraisers, all that kind yeah. of stuff. I thought the fundraisers were to make funds, not, I mean, yeah, I guess you got to spend <laughs> money to make money, yeah. but yeah. No, that's true. Um, a lot of it, uh, they're dues that you have to pay to like the national organizations and mm-hmm. stuff. So like you have to, like the, I think each person like um, depending on how many people are in it, you have to pay more um, to your national organization or something mm-hmm. like that. I really don't. Yeah, know that's what I was wondering. Like, it. who's this going to? Like, yeah, did Zach Long they're, just? They're rack big up, organizations. Bro? Like, it's they're they're getting money. They're make they're for profit. Most I I think some yeah. of them. Um, they some say, of them I think they, are nonprofit. They, they say like it's well, they do a lot of philanthropy too and like community yeah, help yeah. stuff. Um, so yeah. are sororities the same way? Like yeah. they got to pay to be in that? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, yes. dude. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah pay a lot of money. I think I probably invested like seven hundred fifty bucks by the end of it, like in 
clothing and yeah because i mean you gotta buy suit and go to formal yeah and buy alcohol and yeah <laughs> i mean I've, I've thought about i didn't know you when i was thinking about it, i didn't know you had to pay i would have definitely been like yeah no never mind yeah, yeah. like because like, i mean I, I go to the friends. parties and stuff yeah. Like, so yeah but yeah i was at i was at one i don't know i think it was sig it was like one of their like nascar ones mm. in but, marksville no w- Which, w- the one that zach's in Oh, Zach went to Knox, UT Did he? Knoxville. Then no, it was the one with uh, who was in that? There are a few. I'm not sure. Are they you, had the. They you're had talking like about a, MTSU though. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely in Murfreesboro. They had that huge like, like filled area in the oh, back, and you had ATO. to walk through the back. ATO. Yeah. No, no, not ATO. No? ATO is with the big barn, right? Yeah. Not that one. Was it Kappa Sig? Off maybe of memorial yeah i think by blue coast i think so yeah yeah i went i don't dude i haven't been to a party like well, that yeah. in so long <laughs> but, but one yeah. of the one of the like <laughs> brothers came out and like checked on like someone who was rushing that was parking cars and he's like you all right and then like made him like chug this vodka <laughs> like, all right you're good all right you're good, uh, you're yeah, good but, now but i was like that's kind of cool <laughs> well and that's one thing he checked I, on him for sure one thing i can say about fight hall that was really cool and the reason that i did i was interested in joining them i had friends in there but they didn't haze at all like and i can say that honestly i did yeah. not get hazed one bit um and that was nice to me that's one a lot of the anxiety i had about joining a fraternity is like yeah, what uh, is this initiation and hazing like i don't want to be yeah, treated like shit exactly like, i'm about to be demoralized yeah like. and i don't that's not something i'm interested in but this fraternity had none of that it was it was strictly brotherhood and i there are some on mtsu i think that do haze mm-hmm. or whatever i really don't know much about it is um, that frowned upon yeah it's not legal oh, okay yeah it's it's, it's literally illegal. it's literally illegal like but people die they, and yeah people have died yeah i watched uh, like a little documentary on youtube and this they were making their pledges chug water yeah. and you can overdose on yeah, water right. and he did it's stupid um and that's that's why i was interested it's this this attorney did not haze there was a lot of joking and like brother i don't know like yeah cutting up cutting up for sure uh-huh. but uh, and yeah it was it was a good time um but it wasn't for me yeah um i realized that i sh- i yearn for a different kind of brotherhood mm. um something that's more genuine, genuine um something that comes naturally not something that's forced yeah um something like this something like my my buddies that i surround myself with yeah dude um, yeah so let's talk let's talk about that um you know what your main focus right now obviously is is this video game and streaming thing so take me through you know we can get into like what games you played as a kid and stuff that i want to talk about that but like what kind of made you want to take this step to just be like all right i'm about to stream like how long have you been streaming and like you know what you know okay you know how did you get hip into that culture yeah um first can can I pause on that for a second? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, there's man. something that I've seen you ask um, some other people that have been sitting in this chair. It's like, what do you, what are you like? What do you def- label yourself? Yeah, as? what's your uh, what title? Title. What's your title? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what's what's your title? And, and that's something that I, I put a lot of thought <laughs> into. I, I sorry. But, no, no, you're good, man. Um, and I thank have you for actually yeah, watching. Love thank love you, that. thank you for actually watching my shit because a, a lot of yeah. my friends don't. Yeah, no, I know the feeling <laughs> that should <laughs> that should yeah that have been on here that don't watch it. Don't Their watch moms it. watch it, yeah. but they don't. Yeah, I I know yeah. the feeling. So yeah, um, man. so yeah, my title. Um, I have a lot of different titles. Um, first, I'm a son. I'm a brother. Um, I'm a grandson. Yeah, those are three of my biggest titles. Um, I'm now finally a graduate. Uh, you are. It feels really good. I'm so I, I'm gonna keep saying that. To, I say that to everyone who's in school and finishes that shit, man. That's a big ass accomplishment. It feels good, and it's something that there were multiple times along the way that I was like, I'm not gonna make it. Through. I don't think I can do it. I'm gonna drop out. I'm not gonna finish <laughs> this. There's other things I can do with my time, but yeah. Um, up until the last second, I tried not to get excited about it or mm-hmm. like get my hopes up. But now that it's over, it feels really good. A big weight off my chest. Mm-hmm. Um, but. So the you're next, a son, a brother, a friend, a graduate. Yep. The next thing is a philosopher. Um, I mm. consider myself a philosopher. I'm a philosophy major. Um, oh, that's what I was meant to ask you. Yeah. So philosophy. I that's majored in philosophy and I minored in psychology. Um, very, so a very lot of reading, a lot of writing. Yeah. Um, and that's my a next A lot title. of reading. A lot I, of reading. I can only imagine how many books you had to read. <laughs> a lot of it. It was nice because I didn't have to buy like a ton of big textbooks. It was yeah. a lot of little novels, but yeah, they yeah, add yeah. up. And I mean, my bookshelf's full, bro. Um, oh, you got to keep them that you didn't just rent them? Uh, like, they're just, they're little novels. They're like 10 or 11 bucks a piece. Oh, yeah. So I'd rather just buy it and be yeah. able to ride in it and like keep my notes in it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so a philosopher and a writer. 
Um, I think there are a lot of con- misconceptions about what a philosopher is. Um, a lot of people, you think that you've got to have published work or you've got to go and get your master's or your PhD to be to a be philosopher. To be a philosopher. Um, what is the definition of a philosopher to you? Uh, to for, me. For people, you know, you hear someone who doesn't, I mean, you hear philosophy and you might have this conception in your brain, but like, what is it? Um, philosophy, exactly. is, it's just thinking. It's um, thought. It's mm. um, intentional thought. It's not just letting your mind wander. I mean, it can be, um, but it's it's intentionally thinking about something and going through a process of um, reasoning, and reasoning, and, logic. Um, yeah. And there are lots of different facets and lots of different um, types of philosophy. I mean, yeah. I, one the biggest thing that kept me interested, the thing I'm most interested about um, is language and communication. So I did philosophy of language, psychology of language, um, I'm just enamored by communication and how yeah. we can communicate ideas to each other. Yeah. Um, I think that that is so cool. Um, and just being able to write stuff down and yeah. that, that's something you can leave behind. It's You're like right. this conversation, us recording it, we're going to have, it's going to be, as long as the internet stands, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. Um, and I think it's cool that we can leave that mark on time. Well, uh, it's, interesting you can also relate this to to like hieroglyphics in caves yeah you know what i'm saying like uh they were talking thousands of years ago and like people are still like trying to f- figure out some stuff that they took like a rock or whatever or like a some pigment and threw it on a wall and drew up stick figures yeah. and like you know with spears and like we're still like huh dude and every day we're coming out with new types of communication. So like different mediums and methods of ways yeah. to communicate with each other. Like social media, you got like yeah. new forms of social media coming out every day. Yeah, um, literally. And so are we communicating to, like to each other through tweets? Are we doing it through vines or like six mm-hmm. second videos? Are we Snapchatting each other? Like yeah. all of that is ways that we're all communicating with each other. And I think that's so cool that yeah. it's like there are all these different ways and um, methods to do it. and. Mm-hmm we're evolving with it where yeah um and i get a lot of inspiration from like elon musk and um he's, a, he's a philosopher dude exactly and people i mean don't he's, see a, bu- a, he's a businessman for sure yeah. ceo billionaire whatever he's about his money to me he's a philosopher bro he's a thinker i see him as a philosopher <laughs> and I, I watched his podcast with joe rogan yeah that's a good one i can just you can just see his eyes like going in the back of his head like he's he's sitting there talking and come up with these ideas and he thinks before he speaks yeah. like there like he speaks with intent and that and i like that i like the articulation and placing certain words where they need to go to get the yeah. message across that you want to get across um I, so, s- I saw a video of uh so keanu reeves yeah he was uh being interviewed at this like award show or something and someone was like so Keanu, what do you think? Blah blah blah. I don't remember the exact question. And then like handed him the mic, and he literally stood there for like ten seconds, like gathering the thoughts. Yeah, and then he said it, yeah. and like people were so like, "What? Like so awkward? Like what? Like you know, hating on him?" But like, no, he was like thought about what he yeah. was gonna say instead of just being like, "Oh yeah, it was good." I would rather take my time and think about what I want to say and like have it come out more accurately than mm-hmm. just try to like spit something out and yeah and I'm and that also leads into music um, and how I'm impressed with you know rap and lyr- lyricism mm-hmm. um, lyrics poetry and stuff, poetry <laughs> uh, oh yeah I'm a poet like I love I love writing and so that at least I write poetry and essays and um, I would like to write a book someday um, I, I aspire so I'm a journalism major and I aspire to write a book one day. I want to write a movie one day. I, you know, dude, that, that's steps in the journey. Yeah, I see it happening. Yeah, yeah. But dude, uh, uh, that, see that red book right there? Super. You know, Mario. Logic. Yeah, he wrote that, and that is so inspiring to me, dude. Like Ninja. A ra- Ninja wrote yeah. a book. Right. Like you got rappers. What does he write a book on? Gaming. gaming. Oh, but okay. still, it's it's how to be good. At, I think it's called how to be good at how to gaming. Get good or something. Yeah, how to, to get, get good, good at gaming. At gaming. But like he did it. it. I'd like yeah. to read it. I, I think it'd be interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not a huge. I'm not not a ninja fan. Yeah. Um, but he's he's he's, uh, he's very, a gamer. He's very clean and um. He's, he's got, kind. He's very neutral. You know. Oh, he's got money. He's got money. He's he got his own money. Shoe now. <laughs> he's got everything. He's in Walmart. He's in Target. Um. But that that kind of leads me into the next kind of phases. I just graduated with a philosophy degree. What the hell am I going to do with a philosophy degree? <laughs> I, um, yeah, man. 
I'm in the same boat as you, sort of. <laughs> yeah, um, I work at a plant nursery uh, part time. Um, on it's called Valley Growers here in Murfreesboro. There's okay. one um, near Church Street by the co-op where the railroad is and stuff like okay. that. Um, they sell flowers and all sorts of plants. And <laughs> the location I work at is over at um, Las Casas in Compton. It's okay. um, by Middleton or uh, by yeah, so MTSU. Like, so sort of? like go out MTSU like towards Las Casas. So they're near the VA. Yeah, it's it's yeah. over near the VA, um, and okay. it's it's this quaint little flower shop, and I just I just work there, and cool, I water man. flowers and sell flowers to people, um, and we just got into the hemp business, and we really? we sell hemp um, in jars, we sell uh, CBD oil, we sell pre rolled joints. Um, and y'all grow all that stuff? We grow it, uh, but we don't grow it here in Murfreesboro. Mm. Um, this is not legal yet? I think it it is. You just have to have a license. Yeah. Um, there are a couple people in Murfreesboro I know doing it, um, but we're up in, I think our greenhouses are up in near the Kentucky border, um, and they've got a license to grow hemp. Um, and now we're selling hemp at our stores here in Murfreesboro. And That's it's like, amazing. It's crazy. Is yeah. the Do y'all sell to companies? I don't like think. landscaping or anything? what do you mean do we, like do we it's sell? a nursery like the oh flowers? yeah yeah so i mean landscapers come by it's it's a lot of like home yeah landscaping business but people come by and we give like landscaping discount and um do y'all deal with naturescape what's what do you mean it's a it's a landscaping company i've never heard of nature no yeah his girlfriend works yeah that's there. what she okay yeah. she so she works maybe what they do landscaping right yeah and she they send her to like okay. i thought you might have seen her because they usually send her to pick up all the stuff from yeah. the nurseries yeah she's maybe. like she works in like the H- not HR. What do you call it? She's like She's what, the desk uh, office person. Yeah, Whatever. yeah. Secretary but yeah, kind of. basically, I get. I don't really know her job title, but it's the receptionist. Okay, yeah. okay. But they make her do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but the location I work at is kind of our secondary location, where um, all the people that don't want to come all the way into town to get flowers and stuff. So we don't have near as much stuff, but it's it's been a great place for me to you know read and yeah um, do my, do my philosophy homework and stuff when I'm not so that flowers. that's your job right now so that's that's my job we did Christmas trees this winter mm. and we do nice. pumpkins um, really all oh all kinds of not just flowers no it's and, not just and, flowers okay cool um, but like pumpkins and well do you guys trees. do like garden stuff like vegetables and stuff yeah we got veggies oh, we got tomatoes damn. we got peppers that's we got, cool yeah so it's not just plants herbs we got I mean like, obviously vegetables are plants yeah. but um. Are you a botanist too? Um, I did take some um, some plant soil science classes when I came back from rehab. I was like, I still kind of want to do this, yeah. like growing hemp CBD kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And uh, so I took some plant and soil science classes, and it was just, it was more like large scale farming, yeah. like How growing corn and buying stuff. acres yeah. of land. I needed to do more of the like specialized botany kind of stuff, yeah. or, like really get into it. But I was like, I can teach myself myself. This yeah, stuff. my friend's little brother got big into it and he was just on YouTube and now he's growing like tomatoes and like this little yeah. bitty like he doesn't have like a, a full yard. It's just like a little bitty like area Square. in between <laughs> the sidewalk and his house. And yeah. he's He's built. Uh, he's grown like I know tomatoes for sure. Some other like Who is vegetables. It? Colby. Colby. Really? Yeah, dude. He's huh. cold at it. That's like he mixes his own like nutri nutri, nutri- stuff for yeah. it. Yeah, nutrients. I, dude, it, what the coolest thing that I tell people is like, it's cool being able to take care of something living and like people joke about like talking to the plants and like they talk back dude they talk back but like i can't i go in in the mornings sometimes and they're all droopy and mm-hmm. like they're sad and like, shit. Oh, i'm hungry and i'm hungry i'm thirsty and then <laughs> yeah. i spend the time and i water it's meditative dude um mm-hmm. we can talk about that more later too i do a lot of meditation yoga yeah. and stuff um but it's meditative sometimes i'll put in i'll listen to a podcast or music when i'm just sitting there watering flowers counting mm-hmm. um and it's cool i mean we got herbs um i don't know it, it's just a part-time thing i don't know how long okay. i'm gonna be there um i i like it there yeah um I, I could see a future there but at the same time um it's allowing me the opportunity to have more aspirations of like um maybe this is something i want to do or like have i have buddies that are in business and entrepreneurship and all that kind of stuff and we'd love to start like a hemp farm or yeah like, and i know everybody's kind of getting into that kind of business um but it, they're just ideas. They're ideas. Yeah. They're on the path. And nothing wrong with having ideas, man. Yeah. Dream big. You like, and plus it's something that you like. Yeah. So it wouldn't even feel like you're punching in. Like you know, me and my friends, we did a podcast a couple of days ago. We were talking about, you know, if you if someone is like, who are you? And you say, 
your job title, like you lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm a server. Oh, I work on cars. If that's what you like, then then you know you, that's good. But punching in, like giving someone a company eight to ten hours a day, is not like. You lo- you're losing. You're wasting your yeah. time almost. You yeah. got to do what you got to do. You know, you have you to. got to make money. I mean, you, you need money. You have to, but you also got to do these things on the side. Like, you know, me and Connor, we try and make time to do something like this. Like, yeah. And, um, and I'm, we're, I'm super blessed and, and thankful because, you know, we have the spare bedroom. It's really rare, you know. We're yeah. young. We're in our 20s. And, you know, we're not cramped into an apartment. Uh, it's We have a house. You know, I, my bedroom is right there. You know, we both live with my girlfriend, his girlfriends, two couples in here. It's it's That's a awesome. it's a good situation, and we also have this time to you know, this little little room, space. To, the space to to do something extra. Yeah, and I think that's really cool. I'm, um, you've been a big inspiration to me and and my aspirations. Um, I, I appreciate that, man. It's cool. Um, you know, anybody can do this. Like we see, you, we see <laughs> idiots do this. Yeah. Idiots make podcasts. Idiots yeah, rap. Man. You, I mean, you hear some of the the shit that people put out. <laughs> that, like it shouldn't be a song. You're right. Man. Anybody can do it. And it's a I, meme. <laughs> I watch these streamers, and I'm just like, what are mm-hmm. these guys? Somebody it's called it art. Um, I I saw a stream the other day. I was showing my mom Twitch and stuff, and um, somebody had a, a video cam of a live. It was like a potato. Or like a jar of peanut butter, and there were sixty people watching. <laughs> Just this this guy. There were sixty people watching was a jar of peanut. Was butter. it sweating or anything? No, no, it was a jar of peanut butter sitting on a table, and fifty people were watching it. And it's like, what? It, okay, anybody <laughs> what can this? do this. Um, what, what brand? At least <laughs> was Peter it Pan? Okay, all right. Hey, it's a good stuff. Um, but I it came to me. I don't. This job um, working at the flower shop. Um, it's kind of it's a side thing. Um, I could it could be a full time thing, but I don't have the background in plants that I, yeah. I would. But you're also getting some good valuable experience. Yeah, I am learning a lot, um, and I I feel com I've get, I've gained some confidence over the past two or three years working there. So I've been there for a while. Yeah. Um, after working at Jimmy John's and all sorts of mm-hmm. places. JJ. <laughs> good old Jimmy John's. Um, but then I started to realize like, okay, I'm about to graduate. What am I gonna do? with my time like what am i going to do to make money um Mm -hmm. i'm still living at home and i'm very grateful i've got a great situation as well dude Um, and stay let me tell you this man stay there as long as you can if your parents are like okay with it man stay there as long as you can save your money up bro uh because like i mean you already know you've done it on your own and you know it's expensive and And like i can do it if i have to but like why why not save some money that's dude that's a really good way to think because yeah, if your if your parents want you there and they're okay with it, and you know, do it as long as you can. For and real, it's a productive and safe environment too. It's not that like trap house feel where like yeah. people are always coming by and you don't have time to. I mean, like it's structured. No I'm, quiet time. Yeah, I mean, I've got time. groceries, I've got stuff on the table. I don't have to worry right. about like, and it's cool. I'm very grateful for them and thankful for them letting me stay there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know in, how long in Murfreesboro. There. In Murfreesboro, okay. yeah, I live over um, cool. off Memorial by Siegel and Sportscom okay. and stuff like that. Okay, nice. Um, and yeah, it's just me and my parents right now. My brother's moved out, and I got a dog, two cats. I saw your dog the other day Dude, uh, on your Snapchat. She's adorable. Is it a girl or a boy? It's a girl. A girl. He's, it's a boxer. It's a boxer. She's like Big nine, old boxer. ten years old. I'll show you some pictures later. She's adorable. Right. She's but adorable. no, dude, on his Snap story, it was like six eight, six p.m. on the dot, and she was like, "She's got where's smart. dinner?" Like he literally smart. like showed the clock, and it was six p.m. He was like, "You know, it's dinner." I was time. I was sitting there streaming, like playing video games, and she just like walks up in my room, and like start growling at me. It's like, time hey, for dinner, kill him. Like, like I'm hungry, yeah, and I know you feed me around this time every day. Yeah. I just feel it. Uh, dogs are dogs are smart, man. They are. Um, she's getting old. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna have to spend with her, so I'm just trying to like yeah. spend time with her. My grandparents live behind me as well, oh, so that's cool. um, my my mom's parents, I kind of help around the house over there, oh. and because um, she's kind of sick, she's got MS and stuff, so I just kind of mm-hmm. try to help out and do some yeah. of the handiwork around. I kind I can um, relate to that too. My uh, well, thankfully, well, my grandfather's kind of sick. He's getting older. But my, my grandparents live literally one block this way. Okay. My aunt and uncle live one block that way. And my mom lives like three blocks over. Like we literally all live in, within Dude. a five mile, five minute 
drive. Uh, same for me. My, it's amazing, actually. And I, yeah, dude, spend time with your family. Family, I, family support. Anybody you're watching this, mm-hmm. like a, any, I did. T- like, you're never lot. too cool to like just spend time with spend your family. Spend time with your grandparents. Yeah. Um, because you know, you're, you're never gonna. Home. There's gonna be a time when you can't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. And I, I took philosophy of happiness, like all sorts of philosophy classes, and a lot of the things I that kept reoccurring was people and their biggest regrets was like didn't spend enough time with my family yeah. or like didn't take enough vacations with them and stuff like that so um i'm trying to get in that time um mm. I, um so yeah it all kind of came to me at once where i'm like i'm just playing video games and i'm about to graduate it's like i need money um mm-hmm. it's about multiple sources of income yes um it's not passive gonna, income passive income i'm not gonna me personally, I'm not going to get a nine to five job. I'm not going to go sit behind a desk yeah. or an office and it and works for some people. So I work at a warehouse right now. You know, it's okay. I make enough money to, you know, pay bills and stuff. And, you know, you know, I can invest in this kind of equipment. Yeah. Um, I don't like it, but I absolutely, I don't, I don't hate it though, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it sucks and I'm, I'm very tired, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a good situation and I have a degree. I have a bachelor's degree, and people ask me all the time, like when they find out I graduated college, they're like, "Why are you working here?" I'm like, "Well, because I don't want to just go sit behind a desk." Yeah. And I was like, "When I do leave this job, I'm, it's going to be something that I want to do." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. It's going to be something that I'm gonna I'm gonna find a career in this yeah. when I leave here. Right now, it's just a stopping point. You know, I've been there about a year. They like me there. I'm mm-hmm. hired on through, you know, I'm on their payroll. Uh, I make decent money. Keep it, yeah. Yeah, and I, like I said, I don't love, I don't love it, but it's all right. And for now, I got to do what I got to do. You know, I got weekends off. Yeah. I'm good. You nice. know. Yeah, um, and and that's the cool thing about working at the <clears throat> the nursery is it's it's seasonal. So like right now, mm-hmm. I haven't worked in like two or three weeks, which is bad because I'm not making money. Sure. But um, it's nice because I get this time to relax. And yeah. Like, um, invest time in, in myself, mm-hmm. um, and my aspirations. So I, I mean, throughout college and high school, I've just loved video games. Yeah. Um, after I stopped kind of having to hang out with my friends and got out of that lifestyle, um, I kind of secluded a little bit and was able to still interact with people on this online environment, um, and enjoy playing games. And if, if I'm being completely honest, it's almost an addiction at this point. It's like yeah. I'm addicted to video games, dude. I, dude, I'm obsessed with podcasting and videoing yeah. right now, dude. I, it literally, because like I'm an Aries and yeah. I'm very, Gemini. I'm a fire sign and I'm very, when I'm like very passionate. My ruling planet is Mars, uh huh. So, and Mars is uh like you know the planet of passion and war, okay. Huh. And uh, when I like like something, dude, I Damn. I become like obsessed with yeah. this kind of stuff and like dude i try and like dude you should have seen the first one we did bro we had a lamp as a light dude and like i remember seeing the first couple podcasts yeah i remember watching and, them. and like we've we've improved and like you know i'm just obsessed with like making the best of this situation progress. you know that we have here and yeah making progress and um yeah dude tell me a little bit about your setup though yeah um so I mean, oh, very I mean, dope. My first, my first, I I started on Xbox just like everybody else. I mm-hmm. had an Xbox, PlayStation, um, some handheld stuff. Um, graduated high school, moved into my first apartment, and my roommate Mason okay. um, spent some of his graduation money and built a PC. And that was my first um, encounter with like building a PC. Like, wait, what's the like, difference? What's the difference yeah. between a PC and like? A gaming computer Console. like it's i have a laptop a lot. why do i need a pc uh-huh. a lot <laughs> there's a lot there's a there's a big difference um and so i went on craigslist and spent 500 bucks on a pc that some guy had built himself um in an old crappy case and that's kind of where it all started and i started playing video games on do my you still PC. use that one um i have made adjustments to it i bought a new case for it i bought okay. new parts for it new um video car- graphics card um i've actually bought a new motherboard cpu like all this i've pretty much replaced the whole computer okay. but there's still a few parts, parts, of, parts of that yeah original yeah computer. yeah um what i'm sorry no, i mean cut you off what graphics card graphics um the one I, so right now i've got i run on a two pc setup one dedicated just to streaming and one just for gaming um the gaming i have a 1080 
uh, uh, NVIDIA GeForce 1080, I think. And then in the streaming, it's like a 970 or something. It's not like anything crazy, but I... Dude, graphic cards are not cheap no, regardless. I think it was when I finally decided I wanted to make this like a gaming PC and like I wanted to take the next level up, I was upgrading from like a 970 to a 1080. The 970 was in that first... PC so which one which one is better 1080 is significantly okay. better it's like a five yeah. or six hundred dollar yeah, i don't know dude, anything dude. about pc gaming it's ridiculous okay. um so i went on amazon and amazon had like this pay monthly thing so oh like, yeah i've seen that so i bought a this 600 hundred dollar graphics card and just paid 100 bucks a yeah. month for six months oh and dope then i got i have this this very good quality graphics card um and so i started playing games and um for two or three years i was just playing games on my pc finally so without my Xbox. without uh streaming yeah without streaming okay. this is just just playing just something you i mean something, something you, i enjoy doing yeah. um uh starting to get good at games i was introduced to rocket league um dude is, i i, I love like rocket watching league. you play I, dude you need to check out his streams i don't i've never I played will. rocket league and i really had never watched it until i tuned into his stuff and it's actually it's actually really entertaining well, dude it's fun to play i never played it it's all it, it's all full circle for me, and, and he played soccer in high school too. I was getting ready so, to bring that up, yeah. um, and it it's a good replacement f- for me. It, it, this this title, this job, this occupation that I'm trying to do, um, it all kind of fits in because you know in high school I was um, a soccer player. That was my mm-hmm. identity. That was my title. Right. I, I played soccer. Then yeah. Um, and I had some bad concussions, and oh, I oh dude, I, I remember that I couldn't play yeah, soccer anymore. It's dude, like, do you remember that time I saw you at the hospital? Bro, that was so weird. Bro, like, you remember that? Holy shit! Memory just bro. <laughs> listen to this. You dude. came to the hospital. All right, hold on. You were at the hospital already. Yes, with your fan, bro. All right, dude. Listen, <laughs> listen to this shit, Connor. Oh, all right, God. so I'm at the Central Soccer game watching it. Oh, Con- uh, Kellum gets a concussion. He, you know, ambulance comes out. Bro, he what? he was bad. Like he was like, right. I don't know did if you, you were did unconscious. You go stiff? So okay, so this is what happened. It was it was the district finals or something. Yeah, and we went into overtime. Yeah, and um, they crossed a ball in, and I went up for a header, and I headed one of my own teammates. Yeah, and Ooh. just like went fell down to the ground, and then they ended up. I don't think you went unconscious um, though. I didn't go unconscious. But so like still, I kind of like... I kind of wobbled around for a minute, and then um, something happened, and then. I think they scored and we lost or yeah. something. Um, and I just kind of like sank to the ground and just laid there. And then people mm. started coming out. And, and you're like, what is going on? Because there were a couple of doctors in the crowd. And so there were a lot of people there because it was like the district yeah, finals. It was shit. deep. <laughs> um, and then they ended up calling an ambulance out. I never really went unconscious. Things were like mm. black spotty. and spotty. Spotty. <laughs> Definitely it hurt like hell. Um, mm-hmm. But they put me out on the stretcher and like the little neck brace and took me to the hospital. Uh-oh. It was super random though. All right, yeah. so I my mom called me at the uh, at while I was at the game and was like, "Hey, your sister had my sister like cut her foot open. My sister used to do gymnastics. She like cut her foot open and ha- she was like, hey, Haley's at the hospital. Like, you know, I was like, oh, let me come up there with y'all, just like be with my mom and my sister. And then it was so random. Like, I, Kellum was Walk. going to the hospital too like he was coming in and i was already there and i was like oh dude i was like are you okay like i was like no like we both were at the hospital like we were at the soccer game and then, and then reconnected at the hospital for two different reasons yeah, like it was it was insane wild. that's that's crazy to think about i honestly yeah. forgot about that but i do uh-huh. genuinely remember that now oh, <laughs> it's damn. crazy um but after that man um after you have your first one it's a lot easier to get more concussions mm-hmm. um yeah concussions I, are wild yeah um uh, i I kept trying to play after that. I wasn't the same. Yeah. I wasn't as aggressive. More I was timid. skittish. Yes. I was like, I'm not going for headers. I'm mm-hmm. just fucking scared. Right. Um, and so soccer eventually. Soccer just kinda, and Rocket League. Yeah, soccer connection. and Rocket League. Yeah. I, I did some refereeing for a while, tried to stay um, active. And then I, I got yeah. into the more like literary kind of stuff and started hanging with other friends. And Okay. Um, I, I Soccer wasn't my passion anymore. Um it, it was to an extent. It's soccer is something that's always going to be important to me, and it was a very influential part of my life. Um, but it's something I couldn't do anymore. Yeah. Like, I physically your body, I wasn't the same. It made me wouldn't. upset to try to play soccer mm-hmm. because I wasn't pl- playing to the capacity I knew I used to be able to I could yeah, play. Yeah, for sure. Um, that is that is frustrating. And, so, I mean, you played as a kid, right? Yeah. When did I, you start? Like five, six, nine, eight, eight or nine? nine yeah, a child. And then, you know, you're playing all the way up to your an adult. 
uh, high school, I mean, I had aspirations of playing in college or, mm-hmm. like, you know, going on. I wanted to be pro. Everybody wants yeah. to when they're playing in high yeah, school. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but then all those dreams were kind of crushed, man. Um, and it it sucked. I was upset. Um, and that's, that's when I kind of turned to the other crowd. I was kind of out of the um, athletic kind of stuff, and I started, you know, smoking and yeah. um drinking and partying and all that kind of stuff and um it led me down a different route but now um that i'm i was introduced to rocket league it's kind of filled that void for me of what soccer used to it be. gives you the same feeling it gives me the same feeling and it, i have the <laughs> same aspirations of like wanting to improve and better myself and you know it's it's the soccer feel it's soccer it's yeah it is soccer it, it is soccer but you're playing with rocket cars. Yeah, cars um, and a big ass ball. <laughs> yeah, and weird physics and like you can drive on the ceiling and all this crazy stuff. But it, there's a lot of room for skill. Um, it's oh, it's definitely. a hard game. Um, it, the definitely. learning curve, strategy, game strategy, there's and game stuff. strategy. Like there's mechanics that like with your car that you've got. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna yeah, see. Get, I never you know, like, played hit boost like jump off. Dude. Yeah. Well, like, do they have like different parts and stuff for the, the car? cars, or is it just like one? Everyone it's gets one the same car. car. But you, okay. All the cars are the same. You can't pay to win. You can't buy a car that's okay. faster than anybody okay. else's. They all have roughly the same hitboxes, and um, okay, you all go the same speed and stuff. Okay. Um. So and that that allows for a competitive environment mm-hmm. uh, whereas there are some games that are pay to win or yeah. like you can you have better gear so you're automatically better than somebody else right um everybody's on an even playing field um which allows room for that competitive environment where people can compete and get better at the game you get better mechanical skills and better game sense um, for sure and you you know you can play solo like 1v1 2v2 3v3 mm-hmm. and so I've does it go team. up to three and it goes that's... up to three there is a four it's called chaos mode oh, i bet it is chaos it's literally chaos it's <laughs> awful i try not to play um so i i'm playing a lot of rocket league um and i'm still playing video games with my friends i'm living back at home i'm about to graduate college and i'm like dude i'm gonna start streaming this stuff we have we have great conversations we're right we're kind of funny it's It's entertaining it's basically sort of kind of a podcast yeah and that's something i wanted to talk about too and so i was introduced to twitch and these streaming platforms um where people live stream and it's not just video games, like they're yeah, IRL. Just on chat. Pod, podcast, yeah, just yeah. chatting. Any video game you can think of. There's somebody playing it right now, and there's somebody streaming it. Yeah, you can go right watch now. it. Right um, now. And so you, I can just stream what's on my computer, or I can have my microphone connected, and I can talk to the, the camera or and... a camera, and they can see my face. Um, so I kind of got into this, like, watching Twitch thing, and I'll watch anybody. I'll watch everybody. I'm so interested. It, it replaced television for me. Right. And Netflix. It's entertainment. Yes. Um, but at the same time, it's also informational. Um, so I learn a lot by watching these. It's not yeah. just like I'm going to watch these streams to be entertained. Sometimes I am. When I'm going to bed, I want to yeah. watch something funny yeah. and oh, laugh. Yeah. And um, some game I like, I'll watch it while I'm falling asleep. But there's sometimes there's a new game I'm interested in and I want to learn right, how wait, to the play The mechanic, it. how do you do this? Like, how do you set yeah, this up? Yeah, where do I go? What all yeah. this kind of stuff. I just flip on somebody streaming yeah. it and learn from them ask them questions there's an interface where we can communicate yeah with the, each other. the chat thing yeah that's beautiful there's chat where people you can type to me and i can see it while mm-hmm. i'm streaming and i can talk back to you right and, um it's a really cool thing it's beautiful um, <laughs> but i i start seeing like there are these guys that are getting like 20 30 40 000 views at a time and it's like viewers like viewers live like, live. like <laughs> not, not like, just yeah. views or like followers yeah. or like there are people 30,000 people watching this on their like, screen on, on their screen, screen on their screen like yeah. it's all live um i'm like okay well that's kind of cool but the cool part is they're making money doing it and it's like mm-hmm. a lot of money we were talking about ninja and like there's shroud and multi-million Shady. dr dollars. lupo D- lupo is one of my um biggest inspirations really he's, he's um the person i've actually subscribed to the longest so he's a multiple uh game he's He's world. a gamer. He's a gamer, but he's also a philanthropist. Like he's mm-hmm. he's a good guy. Um, yeah. And he's a big inspiration to me. He raises money and donates it to St. Jude and yeah. like um, all sorts of stuff. So they're making money through donations, and you can subscribe to them. So like you can watch these people live on Twitch for free, um, and a lot of times you can chat for free and all this stuff. But if you want to support what these people are doing, mm. they're doing it as a part time and a full time job. They're doing this yeah. to make money. They don't. I mean, these these guys are doing eight nine hours a day mm. every day. Yeah, um, punching in. Yeah, but it's also. Yeah, but I think Ninja said he did twelve. 
Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, Summit right Gosh. now, there's a new game out called Escape from Tarkov. I don't know if y'all have heard I've, about it. I just start. So I watched Tim the Tatman play yeah. it yesterday with Lupo, I think, yeah, actually. Yeah. Lupo's and big that was player. the first time I'd ever watched it, but I'd seen it, but I was like, okay, I still don't get it. But, yeah, I don't. I'm, um, I bought it and I've been playing it? it for the past three no, days. No, Escape from Tarkov, I don't really. Even I'll know. try to. I'll it's like a survival it game, minute. kind of. Yeah. But it's kind of. It's, it's intense. It's a new game. It's the. It's an yeah, it's kind of Newer a new game, game. and um, I bought it. I'm playing the past three days and streaming a little bit of mm. it. I'll try to explain some more of it later. But um, uh, Escape from Tarkov, Lupo streamers, um, <laughs> lots of money. Uh, yeah, that's where we were. I think we I think we stopped there. Um, so yeah, Lupo he's a big at, uh, subscribing. Um, mm. So I don't I don't generally pay like to watch a lot of these people. There are a select few that I've like stuck with for two or three years and just watched on and off so like mm. lupo i've been subscribed for like 17 or 18 months wow um so i just pay five <laughs> bucks awesome. a month to this guy and it, i'm supporting what he does what he stands for mm -hmm. um and I, I i want him to keep making content because yeah. it's something i enjoy so i'm, I'm gonna support him and mm -hmm. you know a lot of other people do that as well and people donate hundreds of dollars yes. a time you just, know mr beast yeah dude what was it? he he donated like he, 20 grand yeah, to he, to this streamer and this this yeah. person is like what the fuck like, what just happened like, this guy <laughs> yeah. literally just gave me 20 grand um and and that stuff happens um yeah. people get raided like so when i'm streaming right now i yeah. get an average of two or three viewers and one of those is usually me um it, sometimes it, it's just one sometimes it's just me um mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a couple of my friends that i'm playing with and but it's also good that you post the thing on your profile too yeah people go people it's beautiful because you can also have people people might not be on twitch at the same time that you're live but they can yeah. still you know check your game some content out so like i'm recognizing all the stuff i'm watching all these streamers but everybody else is too it's like everybody wants to do this everybody's mm -hmm. trying to stream everybody's it's very just, saturated it is it's saturated because like who doesn't want to play video games for nine hours a, day and <laughs> right. be a millionaire like, yeah duh uh, me, anybody pick me. <laughs> um but so everybody's trying to do it and um I, i'm watching anybody can do it because i see these idiots streaming potatoes and <laughs> jars of peanut butter and then i'm seeing like like idiots just like streaming playing video games and they're not smart and i'm looking at us and like we're smart people mm -hmm. i know how to run, use technology you're doing this like, yeah i know how to use these programs and game. i'm playing the same game as them but one thing is the mentality going into it you can't go into it saying i want to do this as a profession to make money because mm -hmm. people you go in with that idea of i'm going to do this as a job and it takes a lot of luck and a lot of perseverance. People that get that big, that are having thousands of people watch at a time, they've been streaming for five or six years at a time. Consist they like, started consistent, five or six years, like yeah. nonstop <laughs> streaming, like weekly basis. Mm -hmm. What did you mean when you said uh, they get rated? Um, rated. So like I said, I normally get like two or three viewers at a time. Um, there are these streamers that have like 50, 100, 1,000, 10,000 viewers. When they're done streaming, they can send all of the oh, viewers like that are watching it. them. Yeah, you can, you can yeah. host someone else that's streaming. So there's if there's somebody that's just got like two or three viewers and say Ninja is like, I'm done streaming for the day. I've got 100,000 people watching me. I'm going to send all these people over to this to, guy. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. he can just type in my name and those 100,000 people would be moved over to my channel and then they would all be watching me from my it's kind of like have you ever seen a uh, hype zone yeah mixer does that yeah yeah, yeah. like all of a sudden these that's guys really got cool. like thirty six thousand viewers yeah and just like freaking out it <laughs> usually makes them lose yeah 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 oh yeah I mean, and so dude, when that they get happens, flustered when that happens it's like your game goes to shit it's like i'm not playing that well anymore you're just, just focused like, on that oh the God, numbers six thousand people are watching <laughs> yeah they're like right what's now? up hype zone and then like they just get blasted <laughs> and then it's and then their it's followers and subscriptions of and you're getting donations and it all just kind of goes out the window yeah um, but that's the luck that comes into it it's like people pick those people pick those hosts at random it's like yeah. oh that that guy looks good we'll just host him tonight well i thought it was like an algorithm if you get in like the top five there are the algorithms zone. on like youtube and some of the platforms but this hosting mechanic you can choose spe specifically who you want to host so a lot of times you have communities of friends that stream together and they'll host each other and they'll be like oh home my, my friend's still on yeah my friend's still on send your 30 yeah. viewers go go over and say hey what's up to him give yeah. him a follow and yeah. you get a bunch of followers or subs that way that's cool um so you can choose that and that's what i mean by it. it's a lot of luck and just same with any of this kind of creating content it, it is. everybody's putting content out Every, there's so much to listen to 
and only a select number of people are going to be able to have like have the time and invest the time to listen yeah. to your podcast or watch my stream you're right man um and that sucks but the more we keep grinding like the more people will see it the more you just get the word out there mm -hmm. it's like you know every follower I see, counts i see it kind of as a uh you're kind of when you create content like this i see it kind of as like entering the lottery yeah like uh okay let me go let me put this video out and then maybe this one will work maybe this one will stick yeah all right let's try this one let's try this number you know what i'm saying yeah let's try these combinations of numbers let's try you know at this time of the day on this day and that's that's why you've got to kind of go into it with this mentality of you can't have that expectation happen yeah. i can't go in I mean, it's one thing to wake up and have goals and say, I want to be the biggest streamer and make a ton of money. But mm -hmm. for me, the, it's it's a hobby. You've got to look at it as a, a hobby, as something you love to do. Because if right. you don't love to stream, if what you don't you love doing? to play video games, and you spend five or six years trying to become a big streamer, then like, what are you <laughs> you're doing? Wasting you're wasting time. You're wasting your time if you're not enjoying it. So I enjoy playing video games, and I've now invested in the equipment to record myself playing video games right. so other people can watch it. And... You know, I'm not, I'm not out there trying like begging people for followers or yeah. having people share all my stuff. I mean, it, it does help, but I want to do this the right way and mm. not rush into it. Yeah. Um, I want to build a good foundation and build out from there rather than just like putting all my eggs in one basket and like getting burnt out. Yes. Um, within the first month of me trying yes. to stream, so I've slowly been starting to stream over the past two or three months. Well, and also you're doing uh, not you're not just doing one game too, so yeah. that also helps you not get burnt out yeah yeah because that's one thing is like if you start getting a following from playing a game i mean you can get following a couple different ways you can either be a variety streamer and put mm -hmm. out content and entertain people or you can be a professional gamer that's signed with an esports organization yeah. and start getting for, known getting because, ready for tournaments yeah and playing stuff. playing in tournaments because that, winning two, money that is definitely two different types of gamers yeah yeah that one's a variety streamer that entertains people and, and plays one is and a makes competitor jokes, and one is a competitor mm -hmm. and that's where i haven't chosen one yeah um i mean you could I'm, I'm sure there's people who do both there are um and yeah. so you can either get big by being good at what you do and making money playing your game and yeah. then people are like oh this guy's good i want to watch him play yeah and so you get a bunch of followers or True. you just you, you build your community someone and get a like bunch Scump of followers someone like scumpy yeah colt one probably the greatest call of duty player ever roughly but like you know he's he will stream but like he's definitely not like the most entertaining person to watch but dude he's so good at the game yeah he's gonna pull twenty thousand viewers yeah. you know it's like crazy. nothing uh so i i do i'm one of those people that does get kind of burnt out after playing a game for a month or two straight i i get addicted to a game if a new one comes out i'm yeah. like i'm gonna play the heck out of it for 100 hours I'm yeah gonna put 100 hours in this game and then i'm probably not gonna play it again um so i do that um i try new games if you name a video game i've heard of it or i've played it right um and I, I love it i just i spend my time playing a variety of different games but my main one that i do play is rocket league okay um and that is one that i'm trying to start to play competitive with um okay and we have a dream i go by dw lucid yeah i, I was gonna ask you what who's in dream weavers what is dream yeah weavers? so i kind of we had this idea of Dreamweaver is the name um and it's actually the name of an adobe um website yeah wait yeah, that's, I was wrong. It's, yeah. like, it's a it's a software. It's a okay. Yeah, yeah. It's an interface to create a website or something like that that Microsoft and Adobe have put out. Um, but I'd heard that a while while back, and I've always been really big into like dreams, and you know, it's big in philosophy and psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, for sure. It's um, right down your alley. It, it fits. Yeah, I mean, it does. and psychedelic kind of stuff. Um, you know, it, it fits in with a lot of the experiences I've had with yeah. um substances life. and life. Your life. Um, yeah. But yeah, so philosophy and what were we talking about? Uh, Dreamweavers. Dream like who, who's, who's in Dreamweavers? Yeah. So really, the concept I have is we're all Dreamweavers. I don't know if you've heard of what lucid dreaming is. Mm -hmm. So I mean, when when you're asleep, you're unconscious and your dream kind of takes your mind where it wants to yeah, go where and it. you have your dreams. Um, but you can train your mind to check to see if you're in reality all the time so uh, there are these things called reality checks so i can check to see if i'm dreaming or if i'm awake right now yeah I've like seen inception. inception yeah spin the top spin the top <laughs> yeah um it's cool stuff so eventually theoretically you get to the point where you're in a dream and you do a reality check and you're like okay i'm in a dream right now but yeah. you keep yourself calm enough where you don't wake up 
and you're at that point lucid which means you're now in control of your dream you you're in a dream you recognize you're in a dream and you're controlling and, it at this and you point. you have the con- you have control of it you can make decisions in this dream and <laughs> and take control of it and so i kind of make that parallel to life um i tried lucid dreaming kept a um a dream journal for months at okay. a time and on and off um i've had a couple successful ones like two or three but i have two i i've i've uh I mean, just this is kind of random. It's it's definitely on topic, but uh, I just remember in a couple dreams that I've had. I mean, you know, like if you look at a clock in your dream, if yeah. You, if you look at it and then look away and then look again, and that totally. and it's a different time. That's you how know. you know you're in a dream. There's so many. And I've done that before, and I mean, it freaked me out. I remember being freaked out in the dream. Does that make sense? Yeah, sleep paralysis happens, yeah. and like. Yeah, I would I would love to control how fast I can punch in a dream. <laughs> or like, like <laughs> or run flying. You can fucking fly. Yeah, in a dude. Dream, bro. Astral projection. Astral I've tried all that kind of stuff. And that leads into the meditation and stuff mm-hmm. too, like controlling your mind. Um but Astral projection is very scary actually. Yeah, yeah. Just like it's scary. There's some there's some what is that? scary it's like you ch- you like get up in the astral plane with your astral body. It's like project. all right, you you it's hard to explain. It's kind of hard to explain, but like basically your spirit leaves your body and you just you're having an out of body experience. Yeah, you're having an out of body experience. Like you're laying down and then you sit up, your spirit sits up. Yeah, and then like you basically down. stand up or like lift your spirit lifts up and just goes into the fourth dimension. I've or never been able to astral, astral project. I've I have. I've tried a couple times, but I've never come out of my body. I remember when I I've done it probably two or three times and i remember when i came back i literally jolted up i was like <gasps> dude like does that make sense yeah, yeah, i came back yeah. and i was like i was like shaking i was like oh my god like i was really in there and it was like 20 minutes <laughs> i've definitely had some sleep paralysis where like I've it's been kind awake. of like sleep paralysis yeah it's similar we're like I'm, I'm awake and i can't move i can't speak and then you're just trying to scream because you're like awake but you can't are you move. actually awake though or is that a dream i don't know does that make sense i don't know <laughs> You know sleep paralysis? Yeah. Are you uh, act, is are your eyeballs physically mm, actually open no, or is that a dream? Your eyes are still closed, I'm pretty sure. Okay. okay. I think I've done this. I don't know if this is anything, but I've fell asleep on the couch. You know how Lauren likes to open up the blinds? Yeah. And the sun will be in my face while I'm asleep, but in my dream I can't open my eyes. <laughs> like cuz I like it hurts. Yeah. So in my dream I'm like struggling to open my eyes, but Ugh. I don't. I don't know what that is. A tip though. I guess that's just like t- fitting into my dream. Yeah, but you know, a, like uh, sounds and stuff can a, fit in. A tip though, whenever you are uh, paralyzed, is to just fall back, go back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. just be like, don't no. resist it. Yeah, don't just be like, okay, and just go back to sleep. Yeah, and you'll wake up fine. Like you probably won't even remember it. But yeah, and so a lot of this stuff, um, I don't know the legitimacy of it, the science behind it. Like if it's all placebo or like if right. any of this is really happening, but it's interesting to me and it's something I've invested a little bit of time in, but. From what I've learned, it takes a lot of work and a lot of practice if you want to be consistent at doing these practices of lucid dreaming and mm-hmm. astral projection and stuff like that. I mean, it it takes a lot of dedication of ta- making dream journal every day. It's like day uh, and, um, lifting weights for your yeah, brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, making your brain stronger. So it's something that I haven't really dedicated um, a ton of time to. It's not something that I actively pursue lucid dreaming every yeah, night. Yeah, I don't. Anything. I don't med- I used to meditate a lot, and I don't do it. I don't do it really anymore. Yeah. Um, I did find some peace in it, though. It, I mean, it helped me a lot yeah. at a certain point in life. I don't really do it as much anymore. Um, I did yoga when I was little at the Y. Yeah. Because my mom used to work there. Like, after school, you know, I'd go to a yoga class every, you know, once a week or whatever. But I never got into yoga much. But, yeah. like, probably about two years ago, I used to meditate heavy. Dude, it's good stuff. Um mm-hmm. And that that does lead lead into this conversation. We can get back to Dreamweaver and um, mm-hmm. and video games in a second. But um, I've definitely had a, a big spiritual journey. Um, sure. My my pam my family is very religious. My grandmother's a pastor. My parents are very active in the church. A, a female pastor. A female pastor. My, Interesting. My aunt is um, a chaplain in the navy. She's mm-hmm. a lieutenant or something. She's been in the navy for ten, fifteen, maybe twenty years. Wow. Long time. She's in Japan right now. Mm. Um, she actually just came home for Christmas. Um, and so, yeah, 
she's in a very religious family. I was raised in the Methodist church. Um, I still have a lot of respect for the Methodist church. Yeah. Um, I don't consider myself religious anymore. I don't um, subscribe to any religion um, or not even one philosophy or philosopher or um, one way of life. I'm, I stay yeah. very open to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I was, I took Eastern philosophy, like Eastern religion kind of stuff. And um, in high school, I started meditating. This is actually my it's kind of it's crazy how everything comes full circle um this is my second podcast i've actually done um, oh for real a podcast before um it's called mind movers podcast mind and movers. they're they're no longer active i think they have mm. around 100 episodes probably wow. but somebody i listened to in high school Very around nice. the time i first tried psychedelics and um who are these guys we're taking their name <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. um their name brando and steve i think how did you meet them um and just i just found random? them on twitter or something and um and they happen it, to be in the area no um they're in like they're up north and oh so it's a they do a lot of their interviews or podcast conversations through skype oh okay i see i didn't know if like that's they, a really good idea yeah and so that that's one thing i was thinking is and if we want to do this again sometime, I'm mm -hmm. totally. I know yes. Nathan's been on here multiple yeah, times. Yeah, Connor has too. Um, there, we can do it over my computer. I can sh do this at home. We can yeah. have a conversation at home. And you can record this. Yeah, I have a. Uh, um, so just a few people I've connected with on Instagram, like a couple rappers, and one of them is in Texas, and we, you know, DM and stuff. And then like, whenever I really started doing this, he was like, dude, I want to get on. And I was like, bro, if you're ever in Tennessee, you can totally, totally, you know, come on. But I was like, we, we need, we need to do like a FaceTime bro, something. You can expand like Skype, yeah. Discord. I don't know if you've heard of Discord. It's what have, all the gamers use. Yeah. Um, you can do video chat. Yeah. You can mm. do video chat. I can stream games on Discord That's now. Cool. It's like, so we could have video, audio, all that stuff on mm -hmm. Discord. Um, I could be sitting. My I'm not setup. necessarily married to just, I, I have the visual it's, there. Just to add another element to it, but I know a lot of people listen to it, just pop the headphones yeah. in, and like that's why I have it on Spotify and Apple, for you know. Yeah, and that that's a it. great idea too. Um, and that's that's what I like about streaming. That's um why I'm kind of interested in that. It's it's one thing to have the environment to have a podcast and um, have conversation like this, but a lot of the best conversation. This is something I learned in my existentialism class. Um, it's spontaneous. It's it's not something you can plan. Mm -hmm. Like we can plan for an hour or two hours to sit here and have a conversation and podcast, but we're not gonna be able to say everything we want to say. It's absolutely like, not. No, um, <laughs> absolutely not. And back when I, I mean, I know you have experience creating music, um, mm -hmm. and you have that artistic ability and I've, I've tinkered with playing music and mm -hmm. I mean, I was in band in high school and mm -hmm. middle school and stuff. Um, I, I don't have a lot of knowledge and experience with interfaces, MIDI controllers yeah. and um, uh, mixers and stuff like that, but I'm still learning. Um, but this idea of creating, um, it's something that happens naturally and organically, and yes. you can't force that to happen. Mm -hmm. And so what I like about streaming is I'm live for anywhere between three and 12 hours at a time, mm -hmm. and I can have conversations and... Um, go back and edit and then make videos of all the stuff and capture everything. What The point I'm trying to get across is you've kind of always got to be capturing. I have buddies that want to make music, but they're like, oh, we've got to come over and have this recording session. It's like, no, you, you play around with whatever you're doing and just record it. And yes. that's when something good happens. Yes. It's when you're just messing around. And, and, and doing it. Instead just of, instead just of, doing it instead yeah. of planning to do it. It's press the record button yeah. and just fuck around. And you're going to play. You're going to fuck up. Dude, it's, I have me and Connor... <laughs> We fucked up, like I told you before the podcast, we fucked up that podcast with Barkley. Me and Connor did a whole show one time, and we had to delete it and record it again yeah. because it, like, his audio was and fucked up. And that's soul crushing. And I was like, ah, but it's fine. No, it, was, it was a good one, too. Like yeah. we were, It was devastating. It was, but, but we, I was like, okay, we can do it again. Like I, w I was like, all right, bet tomorrow or two days from now, we'll, we'll do it again. It's, it's not going to be, like you were saying, it's not going to be the same, and it's not. we're not going to get everything that we wanted to say out in the in that one but you know we did have the topic same topics right. but it was a little different but yeah i was like let's let's keep the recording and reference back to it and he was like nope no, deleted he, it he was like nope there's no point no there's no it's point. not gonna there's be no as organic i was like it. yeah i was like yeah we, we're gonna mimic it sort of and i was like okay yeah i want to talk about this documentary but like there's no i'm not i don't want you to be like oh wait what did i say then yeah like, no like let's let make it be natural yeah yeah it wasn't it wouldn't have been organic or <laughs> yeah. anything. i didn't even talk about the same guys that 
Yeah. Uh, it was like our true crime episode. It was episode 13, so yeah. it's kind of creepy. And uh, yeah, I didn't even talk about the same dudes or the same yeah. things. Yeah. I, that, that's what I like about streaming, though, is it, it is kind of like a podcast where it is. people, for me, when I'm playing games, sometimes I'll have streams in the background where I'm not watching the stream, but I'm just listening to them chat and like have a good time. For sure. Um, and it's entertaining, um, for sure. And so if I do have, if, if some cool play happens, I can go back and record it because it's all being recorded as I'm streaming it. Um, yeah. So if somebody, if people are in the stream watching live and something cool happens, that's great. Like we just had that moment oh, we together. Just had, we shared a moment. Yeah. Um, but if there's nobody watching it and something really cool happens, I can clip it and go back clip and it, like put it on put Instagram it in a video, or... put it on Instagram, Twitter, share it with other people. Um, and that's what I like about the, the live streaming um, thing is it kind of mixes all of the the content together and mm-hmm. it can be a podcast it can be a live show it can be a recording for sure it can be a video um people do those irl ones are really dope yeah uh what's the, his name okay that's i was gonna say this earlier but i didn't want to stop oh, you on your you were in a groove have you ever heard of ice poseidon it sounds familiar he created irl okay yeah Dude. so he started out doing he streamed minecraft no no, no it wasn't even, it was runescape yeah. he streamed runescape <laughs> And um, then I guess one day he was just like, I'm going to go out in the world and take the stream with me. And he got, he was super successful. He kind of had like a downfall recently. Not too recently. It was like last year because um, he was getting, he was getting swatted. Like at one point he was getting swatted three, four times a week by this one hacker. It's messed up. And they went to as far as like calling in a bomb threat and spoofing his number because he was, you know, it was IRL. Yeah. He was at the airport, and they're like, "All right, you know, just sim- like clues behind him, like which airport he was at." And um, it got so bad, like he broke down on one of his streams, and it was like Stop. a group of hackers that were like good you hackers, they him. helped him, and they were like, "Yeah, we found him," and that's crazy. took that guy down and like really helped him. And then after that, he strived, and mm-hmm. then recently he got swatted again for I, I don't even know what dude, but the F- FBI took like all his computers like he got banned from like sh- like streaming in the city of california or in the state of california like wow. can't do it no more wow in like, his home that's messed up <laughs> can't do it at all in the state of california like he had to leave dr disrespect um he's, oh, a, he got, he's a big he got shot up at his house i mean he didn't get shot yeah but, like, somebody shot, shot his at, window out yeah like at his you house you know him he wears like yeah. the wig yeah yeah He's the number one Apex player in the world. Yeah, he's he is. He has the most kills and the most wins ever in Apex Legends. He's, he's an he's an actor for sure. Dude, like he's, he's entertaining. A, he's an entertainer for yeah. sure. Fun. Um, I wanted to bring that up because you're like these idiots just streaming. Yeah. It, Ice Poseidon is not the brightest person in the no. world. He's he's kind of a. I mean, he was Goofy. working at like a crab place. Like he he was just a, a short order cook, mm-hmm. and he decided to stream. Anybody and he used to he used to wear like button ups with a tie to stream. Yeah, and but <laughs> which was so goofy. Like dude, you're but streaming. It has personality for sure. He he did. He that's what it was. He had a really good personality. Yeah, and he started like the little. I don't know if you ever played RuneScape. But yeah, where you'd stand on the other side of the door and keep closing it when people were trying to come in. Like he started that. <laughs> it's crazy. Like it, and that's cool. The internet has allowed for this like collective like i don't know everybody you can just share that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and you can create online personalities and egos and um use them as tools mm-hmm. um, to communicate with each other and create entertainment yeah and, content and everyone's and just very we are very connected now yeah. um it's just it's beautiful us but being able to stay in contact even though we haven't seen each other true. in a year yeah. and a half two years it's yeah crazy. like i literally haven't talked to kellum in in a while I mean, we can, we DM every once in a while, like Snapchat every yeah. once in a while. But like, I saw you were streaming and stuff, and I was like, dude, that's really dope. Because I've had a couple friends that did it a few years ago. They were doing Black Ops Two, so yeah. like what five years, something like that, like heavy. They were doing it all back the t- when you were living on Middle Tennessee. Right? Um, no, oh, this was before that. We were in high school. Dang. Yeah, it was like a while ago, probably six years now. But uh. Yeah, they were streaming Call of Duty Black Ops. They would uh, do uh, three three on three S and D, yeah, like uh, game battles, all mm-hmm. that kind of shit. They were doing it, and then they stopped. And like, dude, I always tell them, I'm like, please get back into streaming. And like, my friend dude. Parker, he he got back into it sort of recently, like last year. He started streaming Fortnite again, and then he just quit again. I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm always like, dude, just. He it, makes beats and music too. He does music too, but I was like, dude, that's just like another, you know, thing for you. Yeah. And 
and that's the thing anybody can do it everybody's doing it um but i can do it better you can do it better like we have sure. the tools we have the brains that like if as long as we stay dedicated that's the thing is like anybody can do it but nobody not everybody has the drive to like actually follow through with doing yeah. it everybody's got the idea of starting a podcast everybody's got the idea of streaming oh like, that would be cool who yeah. actually streams for eight to ten hours a day almost yeah. every day it's like oh okay i do now yeah and it's like who spends eight hours editing a podcast yeah You're sitting man. here talking to people it's like you do now people and don't real and then people people don't realize how much time and research mm. not <laughs> just the preparation Learning. before that we even you even press record you yeah. know are you started your first stream you did a lot of research you didn't learn how to do this in high school or college no nah, like, dude this is something you're having to self-teach yeah um and that's admirable um and i respect that and because mm -hmm. a lot of people they try it and then it doesn't work you just don't persevere through it yeah. um so that's what i keep telling myself is anybody can do this i know i can do it better i have the tools to do it better i can invest the right amount of time and the money in the right places so i can have a good production and you know try to entertain people yeah. or you know now i'm trying to get into the competitive scene that i have the time now that i've graduated um i can stream part-time or make content or whatever but i i want to do those wager matches s and d sure. like um i play a lot of call of duty i'm good at call of duty um mm -hmm. i'm not amazing i'm not like i'm not pro level at any game that i play yet because these pros are putting eight to ten hours <laughs> daily daily yeah, in that like, one game and it's yeah. like there are too many games that i want to play yeah. um but rocket league's the closest one for me i just broke two thousand hours playing rocket league um that's, that's just amazing. on my pc yeah. it keeps track of how many hours you've played that's, um, that's not including like xbox and stuff but you know these pros the ones that i'm watching now that are like just getting into the scene of the professional mm -hmm. and semi-pro they've got five or six thousand hours so Jeez. i'm like i'm almost halfway to being pro i'd say have you ever played smite um yeah i played smite on xbox do you like it um it's not my type of game because it's kind of like league of legends in a way right or like you got lanes and yeah it's like a, a team definitely yeah. game but what do you remember what Devin said like he said um uh, we did a, a podcast with one of my friends i met at work um but he played smite and he said that he hit like last year it was like it was a bunch of hours like he definitely hundreds yeah it was hundreds of hours in, yeah. in the smite yeah and it's crazy the amount of time that i mean people put into games um specific games and games in general and mm -hmm. just streaming um yeah, I have a lot of improvement left if I want to, you know, um, so back to Dreamweaver a little bit. I created this, um, my two buddies and I, Ryan and Mason, um, they're mm -hmm. probably, I guess, two, one of the co-founders of Dreamweaver. Okay. So it's three of you guys? The three of us, are, I would say, are probably the founders of Dreamweaver. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I came up with this, this idea, this persona of DW Lucid, which is Dreamweaver. Um, lucid and so like lucid dreaming is kind of like weaving your dreams you're creating your dream as you go you're in control of it sure so I, I parallel that with like life and to the point where like you know I'm not just gonna be passive in my life and go where it takes me I'm gonna you know make the choices yeah. and direct myself where I want to go mm -hmm. in life um, and I think anybody can do that yes um, and I that's why um, you know Dreamweaver you know I've there are these esports organizations like hundred thieves and phase clan and mm -hmm. stuff that um, big corporations big corp I mean they're for profit and yeah. um, nonprofits parts and stuff I mean they make a lot of money they uh, hundred thieves just paired up with cash app and have oh, do you see that compound yes, they have a whole compound that they, they just go hang out and play video games at and it's absolutely like, insane it's crazy I would it's a warehouse it's but my, like not a warehouse but like you showed me that it's my Fact. dream to have an esports organization mm -hmm. Dreamweaver, um and you know we hire out the best players in yeah. certain games and send yeah. them to go play tournaments and stuff and and have people work for you editing and yeah all the, i i see that's what i want to do too yeah. with with slightly daily my website man i want people to work with me yeah and i don't want to do i can't do this alone when I mean, you're small i can't have to yeah but when you're small i gotta i gotta edit i gotta you know i gotta wear a couple of different hats connor does lights and camera and he's also uh like on the show yeah I, I do the audio, the editing, and I'm also on the show, and I also write blog posts, and I also run the social medias, you know? Yeah. like, mm. And that's where I'm struggling a little bit right now. It's like, mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm streaming for four to 10 hours a day, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't have the motivation to edit, like watch all of that again that I just played. Yes. Edit it, <laughs> right. and then make a video out of it, and then to find try to one upload little it. nugget. Yeah, and you know, 
that's something that I'm, I'd like to get to the point where I can, you know, stream four or five hours and then edit something that night and crank out a video yeah. so I can get out a video a day, which sure. would be awesome. Um, but I'm still getting familiar with the software and I'm going through a lot of the same stuff you are like getting comfortable on camera, hearing your own voice. Yeah. It's like all that's new stuff well, to me. I also, so I did music before, so yeah. I'm used to this, to hearing my own voice and I'm used to, I'm comfortable behind a mic, but I'm getting more comfortable in front of a camera. That's, yeah. that's new to me for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and just capturing stuff on film mm -hmm. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. No, I, I definitely feel you there. Just like it's the it's a voice thing that gets me. Like hearing my own voice on video <laughs> makes me cringe <laughs> so bad. I haven't watched the video that I'm in. <laughs> I just well, let it go because I'll be like, delete it. <laughs> Ryan, my the guy that helped with Dreamweaver, he's he can't hear his own voice. Like he has to keep the stream muted all the time. Like he hates hearing his voice. So we um the three of us were starting a, a Rocket League. We're starting a league, the Nashville Rocket. We're not starting a league. We're joining a league, the Nashville Rocket League series. There okay. were like seventy teams that signed up. Wow! Last year they had a LAN live action network. I don't know what. I know what you're talking about. So yeah, um, a lot of these competitions you can do over the internet. So like I mm. can compete at my house, at my setup, which we can talk about in a second too. Still, um, um, so I can we can compete at home, but there's also teams where you can go to a stage and there are these these two teams competing on stage in front of a camera in front yeah. of a crowd where they're competing playing like a game like it's a football game <laughs> yeah so um the world championships and all that kind of stuff you know they were in spain this last year a million dollar prize pool the they're rocket the, league rocket league Dope. Um, so it was like a million dollar prize pool um best 16 teams in the world um and so now there's a smaller league um nashville rocket league and i think they had a land in nashville it was like the top four or eight teams can't come and compete in front of a mm. crowd and i think it was like 500 dollars prize pool or something like that it right. nothing That's crazy start. but it's like if i can go with my two buddies and play rocket league all day and win <laughs> 500 bucks it's like, yeah i'll do that and then you, you work your way up um yeah so uh tell me tell me a little bit about your setup and then we're gonna wrap this thing up yeah, but yeah and then just Tell me about your setup and anything you want to plug at the yeah, end, man. Yeah, sure. whenever you're good. Before we get, have you ever been to the score? The score. It uh, was right next to Smoke Token. Yeah, yeah. It shut down now, but I bought. Yeah, some dude, they were. There. You bought what? I, I just bought a few things there. Like yeah, that was a they. That was a land center, and they mm -hmm. used to host. I think it was League. League. I think they and did some Smash like Halo or like I don't know. There was some. There's some cool things, and that would be a fun. Did like, you ever get on one of their PCs? Uh, I I never got. A yeah, when they shut play. down, they sold those PCs for dirt cheap. Mm. dude we missed out <laughs> we missed I, out. yeah he tried to sell me one i'm like i'm not a big pc guy but i knowing now, what the yeah i would have yeah because yeah. dude i think like 500 bucks and they were built to for gaming and to compete yeah. live you know they it's had to hold cool up stuff. yeah and that's one thing i'm always like looking i mean computer science was one of my it was gonna be my minor for a while and if i ever go back to school which is a possibility at mm -hmm. some point um sure computer science is something i'd look into um, but I love building computers. I'm always looking for like spare parts and cheap computers that people are trying to get rid of. Um, yeah. cause I'm, I build my own PCs and I've got like, um, so I started with that one gaming PC and then I yeah, turned yeah, it yeah. into, um, I've now, I think it was this when I started and you stripped streaming, it, you stripped it down and kind of built it, back it up. rebuilt it back up. And then I was like, oh, dude, I'm going to start streaming, but this PC can't handle streaming and gaming at the same time. So there's. A setup where you can do um, dual PC streaming. You have one dedicated to gaming, mm -hmm. one to streaming. Yeah. So I bought another computer and um, have been tinkering with it a little bit, and finally I've just been like investing in all the production elements of, sure. um, you know, a, a good stream. Mm -hmm. And so now, um, looking forward, I'm I'm ready to just like hit the ground running, yeah, keep dude. streaming, you and like keep producing, keep chatting, content. and keep connecting with other people, mm -hmm. and like. I said I've done one podcast before this, and I'll get you the um, the deets on that. If you yeah, want to I want to check that, that out. out. That'd be cool. Um, and I'm looking forward to do more. I've got people all over the country um, that love to talk, and um, I talked to Sean Huber for the first time in like Damn. a year or two, and he's living in Mexico right now. What? <laughs> yeah, just surfing, like of all oh, things. And it's like, of course, um, I hadn't talked to him in like a year and a half, and then on Christmas I messaged him on Instagram, and he was like, "Hey, you want to chat on Christmas?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." So he. I called me up on WhatsApp or something and we chatted for like an hour and a half just wow. talking about life and stuff. And it was, it was great. And I'm, I took this time to like kind of seclude myself and get my mental and spiritual self like aligned back. back. Yeah. Um, and now I, when I was doing that, I had to neglect my relationships with other people and mm -hmm. friends. Um, 
and now I'm trying to build that back and you know connect with other people and you know put myself out there more um, and I don't know just just grow and yeah um, work with other people and that's why I've been so excited and like looking forward to coming and being on yeah, this podcast dude. I really do appreciate you is uh so they can find I'm gonna link everything yeah, yeah. at the end but so, so I go by DW lucid everywhere yeah um, sometimes there's an underscore and I'll get the, the deets on that I've yeah. only got a couple videos up on YouTube okay. I'm, I'm working on editing some more um, I've got weeks worth of content just mm -hmm. like saved on Waiting. my computer of streams that's um, great yeah, it's good, but it's a lot of stuff to go back and yeah. watch and um, yeah. finally produce. But I think the next ones I'm going to come up with are like the my intro and outro videos for the okay. stream. So I'm going to have like some some footage of like my setup and some footage mm. of me playing games, getting like kills, like uh, yeah, yeah. montage kind of stuff. I know stuff. what you mean. Yeah. Um, so I, look look for those couple videos coming out. Um, you can always find me on Twitter is probably my biggest social media. I'm trying to that's start what, That's your main? Twitter is my main where you can find me. Um, okay. DW Lucid underscore, I think. Um, I've got one account specifically for, for my gaming. streaming, for gaming, and then I have my personal account. They're both DW Lucid, I think. Um, so Twitter, I'm starting to use Instagram a little bit more. Um, Snapchat, you can find me. Mm. Um, Twitch, obviously. Twitch, Twitch is the big one, um, and I, I tweet those links out uh, every time I'm live. And Twitch is, um, they've got a good mobile um, envi environment, mobile platform. Yeah, it's it's really easy to use, and it looks just it's, it looks you can good. pull the link up on your phone, yep. on your iPad, on your television, like mm -hmm. anywhere. You can watch. Twitch I put anywhere. it on my TV sometimes, and you can do it for free. Mm -hmm. um, and you sign up an account for free, like all just you have to put in username, email. password, email, just and like, like anything that's it, else. And you're in. Um, <laughs> And you can come and chat with me. Say, hey, mm -hmm. what's up? Um, ask me questions. Um, yeah. All sorts of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, those are the best ways to hit me up. Well, I really appreciate you, Kellen, for coming on, man. We're, you know, like like you said earlier, they're, they're, we're going to do another one. And, like, yeah. there's so much, you know, next time we get on here, you're going to be like, oh, well, I, I wanted to talk. About, I, I wanted to say this. And now I, we have another hour. Yeah, yeah. But I really appreciate you. I'm glad you got yeah, to meet Connor. You guys, this um, is great. This is awesome. Yeah, dude, I really appreciate you. And just, you inspire me. I love your content. Thank you for having me. I'm, it's it's a work in progress, and uh, I'm excited for the future. And that's the mm -hmm. biggest thing that's changed is um, in, in me, um, I'm not bored with life anymore. I'm yeah. not looking you look for forward. my next fix or anything. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited for what I can create next yeah. um, and what I can create with other people. That's awesome, man. Thank you guys for watching. Please share links and, you know, go watch his video game streams. Yep. This was the Slightly Daily Podcast. Peace.